It's April 11th, and this is my weekly wrap-up. As many of you know, we had a meeting last Tuesday, and we talked about a number of things. So let me go ahead and describe some of the things that uh, we talked about, and of course, you're always welcome to comment. So one of the things we talked about was surplus housing resolution. That surplus housing resolution was a list of lands that are within the government ownership. These are our former tax deeds and stuff like that that the county currently owns that are eligible to be surplused. So because they're eligible to be surplused, they have to be put on this list as required by state law, done every three years. These lands can either be given to affordable housing, so organizations, Habitat and others who want to do this, affordable housing throughout the county can take advantage of these lands. There's other organizations as well. But also these pieces of property can be sold and the profit from that sale then goes to money for affordable housing. So if you want to know more, go ahead and send me an email and I'll get you some information. We passed the Outdoor Dog Dining Ordinance. This allows a business who chooses on their own to provide an area outside for dining with individuals who have dogs with them. Now again, this does not mandate that a restaurant do it, it simply provides a proper process to make sure it's as healthy and appropriate as possible. Now, not every restaurant will want to do this, but if you are a restaurant who wants to have an area set aside for individuals to bring their animals with them, and we're not talking service animals, we're talking general pets, bring them with them, then you go ahead and send me an email and I'll forward you the information in reference to outdoor dog dining ordinance. And again, this is a free market. If a business wants to take this risk and provide this service or see there's a need, we should definitely support it. Next is change to animal services. I have to tell you, we changed the policies for animal services. And while I may not agree with everything, one thing I do agree, our animal services has gotten much better. Our animal service director is absolutely doing a phenomenal job between getting grants and working with outside organizations to be able to provide better services. So good job to the animal service director and looking forward to many more improvements. Next, as you may know, I usually have things on the agenda because individuals come to me and say, Jimmy, let's talk about this. So some individuals from the agriculture industry asked me to put an item on and it was to discuss and vote on amending the sign ordinance to allow for permitting of certain short-term signage for agriculture and seasonal business. So the situation is right now, as a business, you have your sign on your business and you get one off-site signage. Well, for things like you pick, uh, businesses that have seasonal specific sales, they should be able to better advertise, so to speak. So as an example, you have here the Farms, Food, and Fun uh, Guide as developed by the UF IFAS Extension. And in that, they specifically have a category for you pick. And if you see all these businesses are you pick from blackberries to peaches to blueberries and others. Okay, so they want the ability to have more signage to help guide people who want to do you pick to their farms. Uh, sadly, two of my peers were absolutely against it. That's fine. That's their opinion. Uh, two of my peers challenged me, and I greatly appreciate that, uh, and helped me in the conversation. So I'll be talking to Inverness because Inverness does have a... Uh, short-term or temporary signage permit for various organizations as does Hernando so it's not like we'd be the only ones doing this so uh, with the assistance of and suggestions of two of my peers uh, I'm going to do some more research this will come back on the agenda in the future it probably won't be on the next agenda but I will have uh, done a little more research now that I've gotten some assistance on where to look from some of my peers. Greatly appreciate it. Now, moving away from the agenda, other issues in the community, Veterans Hall of Fame, go, if you have a veteran who has done a great job of uh, providing uh, improvements in the community and making things better overall uh, for Florida, 
then go to the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, FDVA.gov, I believe that's the website, and go to the Veterans Hall of Fame, download a packet, submit that packet with as much background material to include examples of the great things that veterans has done for either the county or Florida as a whole, and potentially that individual can be inducted into the Veterans Hall of Fame. I want to give you a reminder that the Citrus County Community Charity Foundation still has the letter intent window open uh, that closes, I believe, April 20th. So if you're a nonprofit organization that provides a service, a medical service, or does medical research, then go ahead and check it out, send a letter intent, and who knows, uh, maybe you can be part of the groups that receive what is currently uh, over $200,000 available to uh, distribute into the community. You must be Citrus County based. Now, last but not least, next meeting is April 23rd. Uh, it's at one o'clock. It's a regular meeting and I hope you're there because I have to tell you it's very important that we're going to have the capital improvement program presentation. I suggested a walk around path and a flat fountain uh, at the Beverly Hills Park, which is better known as Central Ridge Community Park. So, again, this is Commissioner Jimmy T. Smith. Have any questions, comments, go ahead and post below, and I'll try to reply if there's a lot. Uh, or if you want a reply that's not out in the public, send me an email. Okay? And, uh, again, have a great weekend, and thank you for listening to my video. Bye.